Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to do the second part of installing an LDAP, only this time we're going to be working on the client. Right after this. So for today, I'm going to be using a <clears throat> Ubuntu server, and this is 18.03.4. Uh, this is running on an x86. It is running on a virtual machine. Uh, <clears throat> but it's just to show you that it, it doesn't matter what the client is. It will work with an LDAP server because they're ubiquitous. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the servers that I have tested... Uh, uh, have been on. Uh, I've tested servers running on Ubuntu, on Debian, on on uh, uh, Raspberry Pis, on uh, Odroids, and on uh, Pine sixty fours. So I know that those work just fine. I know the clients on those same machines work fine. I I have had some issues with Tinkerboards. Uh, there is an extra package you have to install for those. Uh, I don't remember if I had that problem if I was using the Armbian uh, installer or not. I'm running an Armbian right now, but it's been so long, I honestly don't remember if I had to install any additional packages. Sometimes you have to install the uh, PAM module to support LDAP. Uh, so you'll have to check your particular distribution to see what you really need for the client. But uh, for today, what we're going to do is the first thing you'll want to make sure is, is that your host name Uh, has uh, has the um, has the fully qualified name in it. So yeah, <laughs> I can't type. Uh, I'd say I can't type today, but to be honest, I can't type any day. So I'm going to go ahead and add that onto the end. Now for you, it'll be example.com. All right, so that step out of the way, we're all set. So the next thing we'll want to do is we'll actually want to install the package. So for Ubuntu, and this is, now be careful because there are two packages here with the similar names. There's uh, live NSS dash LDAP, and there's live NSS LDAP D, uh, and and contrary to what you might think, the 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 D, which is normally the server one, is actually for the client. <laughs> so uh, just make sure you use the D. Uh, otherwise, this won't you won't get very far. It won't work. So we'll go ahead and install this. It'll take a little bit to do that. It's quite a bit of stuff it has to install. And it's going to stop here and ask us for the URI to our LDAP server. Now, one thing I would suggest uh, is you put in the, uh, the name of the, uh, uh, the uh, server that I did not do a lookup on it. So I'm going to do it this way. This is actually the wrong thing to do. But uh, you don't want to use a, a fully qualified name, and the reason for that is uh, it is possible that if there's something that it can, I have seen this, if there's something that happens with your time servers, you'll never launch the LDAP server. It'll just, it'll just sit in a loop and spin. So if you use the, uh, if you use the uh, IP address, then th that won't happen. You won't have that issue. But... Uh, so anyway, I, I just thought I'd let you know that. So the, yeah, the DNS servers won't start. So, uh, well, if your time is out of sync and so it could be down. So it's always a good form to use the, the actual IP address. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not following my own advice, but I can go back in and change this. So that's not a big deal and it will work for today. So you'll notice that it read the DN. And in my case, it said, uh, the distinguished name said for, it was a DC equal Mac. And knife, and then it said DC comma DC equal uh, info. You should see uh, a, 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 a a DC equal example comma DC equal com. So I'm going to say I need these three files. I need password, I need group, and I need shadow to include the LDAP lookup. I need to have that enabled in order for this to work. Remember last time when we did the server, we put in the constructs that we needed for POSIX. 
and also for the INET uh, uh, org person and also for Shadow. So that's why we're putting in these three. Then we just need to wait for it to uh, get all the other packages together and install those. You know, this will take a few minutes. Once we've done this, uh, what we'll need to do is to go actually validate that. And I'm going to check what the uh, actual IP address is of Note 5, and then I'll, I'll change mine so that, it, so that it is actually using the IP address. That way you can see that you can change this afterwards if you want. I'll show you where those config files are. <clears throat> This machine is very slow. It's on an old hard drive that is a, a four terabyte archive drive. <laughs> so it's taking quite a while. I ran out of room on my SSD, so I had to move it to a, a spinning rust drive, which is not good. Not, it's not optimal. Let's put it that way. It's not optimal. But it works, and that's really the main thing. Almost done. Just not instant. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we'll do a sudo. These files are protected uh, from uh, the only only the root user can read them. So first one we want is the uh, LDAP uh, control file, and in here is uh, some information. You'll notice that I think I got my cursor working today. So uh, these two things here are is the user and group that the the service will be running in, and the service is NSLCD. Uh, and you'll notice here is my URI for my LDAP server and then my, my fully qualified distinguished name. So, uh, let me, let me do a, uh, NS lookup and it's 55. Okay. Let's go fix that. Okay, so now everything is good. It's all happy. Um, as far as if I were to have a problem with the uh, DNS servers, that I, I wouldn't be locked out. So the next thing we'll need to do is we actually need to tell Pam to use the LDAP module in order to uh, create the login so that when I attempt to log in, it knows to go and actually request it from the LDAP server. Um, yeah. Uh, and then again, it comes up with configuration. It, you'll know that if you're missing a package out of PAM, if this isn't here, the LDAP authentication. Uh, and I want to be able to create, now not all of the distributions I have run actually do this, and there is a mechanism that you can do manually uh, to add that entry. And what it'll do is it'll automatically create the home directory if it doesn't already exist. And that home directory, again, is the one we defined in the LDAP server. So we're all good there. So the next thing I need to do is and the other half of it is this one, the NSCD. I'll need to restart that as well. So at this point, cross your fingers, this was the user we created and the password was John LDAP. So if everything is working, I have created, you'll notice it created the directory for me. Uh, I have a default bash profile and so forth. So I have a working client that is actually accessing my server. Now, I told you I would tell you what you needed to change if you didn't see that create the home directory. Uh, what will happen is uh, if you log in with the user and it in that, feature is not turned on, it'll, it'll just stick you in the root directory. Uh, it won't create anything, but you <laughs> obviously won't be able to create any files either. And if you don't have sudo access, well, you're kind of stuck. Uh, you won't be able to create any directories for yourself. So you'd have to end up logging out and then log back in with a user with sudo privileges and then uh, go from there. So um, where do we go to fix that? We go here. Um, This is, again, under Ubuntu. It should be similar, though. 
And, and it's called common dash session. Oops. Um, and John, that's not going to work. He doesn't have sudo yet, so. Uh, and the thing that we're looking for is there should be, yes, this line right here. It says session optional PAM make home directory.so. If that is in there, uh, you, can, you can also do it this way. If you want to set permissions on that, you can. And then I have a skeleton uh, that I can attach it to as well. But basically, it's the same, except in, in my, the version I use, it's required. Uh, and that's about it. But this will work. And I'm just going to take this out. I don't need that. So what about adding John as a sudo user? So all we need to do is this, uh, my user has sudo privileges. So I just need to add him to the group. Well, let me make sure I have a, a, a. Let me make sure that it's been a while. I don't work with Ubuntu every day. Sorry to say that. But don't. I just want to make sure. Okay, wait. Yes, there is a sudo group. All right. So I want to do a user uh, mod, a G pseudo John. That's it. Uh, and now if I were to sign in as John, he now has sudo privileges. That's all there is to it. Uh, and you can add him to other groups as you see fit, uh, either local or you can create those groups in LDAP. So uh, this has been a really short uh, version of this uh, little demonstration here. I didn't, I didn't feel the need to really go through and, and put together a whole long, lengthy presentation with this. It's just not enough steps to bother with, to tell you the truth. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please like and subscribe and hope to see you again real soon. Let me get my uh, exit out of here. Bye for now.